be back at the mining one-to-one -one conference here in Cape Town. We were here last year, great conference last year, even better this year. Um, over 90 companies in about the event, um, some great events in the evening. We've been meeting up with lots of people that are familiar faces and also with some new people we have never met before. Great conference. Mining in Darwin has always been a great platform for juniors globally to come and try and raise capital to get their projects moving. But it's quite clear from the clients and uh, fund managers and the investment banks that we're talking to them uh, that there's so many challenges at the moment for junior miners in, in, in raising funds. Globally, we've got lots of different geopolitical risks occurring. We've got Trump, we've got China growth, how will the coronavirus affect that? Um, and generally, junior miners, um, investors are not prepared to take the, the risks at the moment to get these projects off the ground. And to move this forward, there's going to have to be a jump where um, investors can come together and look at the risk profile. And, um, maybe it's the majors come back in with different kind of royalty funding. Think about it in a different way to try and attract investment and get these projects moving forward because we've had a number of years now of um, sustained, just um, flat growth. Um, there's lots of projects out there, but the challenges of getting that kind of finance is, is, is very stark. It's great to be at the Mining in Darbar in Cape Town this year with BDO sponsoring the one-to-one -one conference. Um, kind of from a sustainability um, and climate change perspective, great to see kind of the focus on those two topics brought into Mining in Darbar this year um, with a lot of talks focused on kind of what mining companies are actually doing, um, what they need to do in the future, um, focus on reporting, focus on kind of what they're doing on the ground. Um, yeah, it's great to see the engagement with the, the mining companies and also the investors and the kind of wider community and stakeholders um, to understand what mining companies are doing at the moment, but also most importantly, um, what they need to do in the future um, to kind of combat climate change. To welcome to the 2020 Mining and Alba from a video time to read perspective. I think uh, overall the Mining Alba into Africa is quite positive. Unfortunately, the Mining Alba get from an investor's perspective into South Africa, I think there's a bit of negativity, especially from a government perspective, as well as uh, the B codes that's not been finalized uh, to try and see what the investment should be going forward. I think then that in general, the feel that we get from the mining dollar, uh, the investment uh, with the discussions we had, as well as the presentations we uh, went to, most of the feel is to invest in Africa, as well as especially in West Africa in the um, gold projects. I think there's quite a few new gold projects into Ivory Coast as well as the DRC. That's quite positive. And again, from a video perspective, at least we've got the African desk that can support our clients from South Africa as well as, especially from the UK and Australia's investment into to Africa and South Africa. So from our point of view, you know, we're ready to lead into the African market and support you with your views and your investment into Africa. It's always good to come down to Cape Town over the Indaba period and uh, meet quite a few different people, different folks from all over the world. And you're finding that more and more of uh, the mining in Indaba is actually being participated to by foreigners, English, Australians. And uh, that's great. That's great because it's bringing a different flair to the Indaba. Uh, it's bringing a different interest. So although there's negativity around South Africa, and you, you've heard that from, uh, in terms of the Mineral, Corporate, uh, the Mineral Council, saying that we need to do a few more bits and pieces of how to improve the economy for the mining industry. We mustn't lose sight that there are some, some green shoots, positives, uh, coming through in the, in the South African market, mainly because of platinum being up. Um, Gold also doing quite well, and that's spurning off a bit of, uh, of investment into those mines. And speaking to quite a few of the consulting engineers, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised how much work there is. It's starting to 
come through in some of the fields of the, of the mining resources. Yes, risk to perceive risk in South Africa and Africa still remains as a constraint. And uh, I expect going forward, how much more of that discount can Africa take? Uh, if we have to consider the amount of risk that you're going to take in Asia or South America, is it that different to Africa? And I think Bev and where's the market needs to really look at this and refocus on investing in South Africa and in Africa. Uh, I'd like just to get some stability on policy and I, I do believe we are, we'll be on a good wicket to try and uh, build on that. From an advisory and IT space, I see a lot of interest in the changing times with IT support services supporting a lot of the mining companies. We see a lot of conversation for mechanization coming through. A lot about labor force, but important to have quality labor force skills. Skills becoming quite a concern in terms of shortage of skills in mining. And we meet a lot of South Africans here. There are South Africans that are actually living somewhere else and exploiting other, other opportunities, but yet they come back and they're still looking for investment in South Africa, which is still very positive. So overall, it's got a bit of negative, but more positive than negative. And I do believe it bodes well for the mining industry going forward, even though it's a much, much smaller scale.